We know that all objects are made of matter, and that matter has mass and volume. This liquid is mercury. As you can see, it can be divided into smaller and smaller drops. Do you think it is possible to create the smallest piece of mercury that cannot be divided any further? But what do you think the smallest piece of matter these rocks can be crushed into? It is impossible with the naked eye to see the smallest particle of matter. But through the ages, people have attempted to find the building blocks of matter for indirect evidence. For example, how do we know the wind exists? We cannot see the wind, but we can see the effect of wind moving objects. And we can hear wind whistling through the trees. And we can feel wind. Scientists had to make similar indirect observations about building blocks of matter since the time of the ancient Greeks, who concluded that matter could not be divided into smaller pieces forever, but the smallest possible piece of matter could be obtained. They used the Greek word atomos, which means not to cut or indivisible, to describe the smallest piece of matter. Today, we call it the atom. This rock contains an element called copper. Copper is commonly used in pipes that carry water and in wires that carry electricity. What do you think we would end up with if we cut up this piece of copper to its smallest piece? With the assistance of very specialized equipment, eventually you would end up with the smallest piece of the element copper called an atom. This is a diagram of an atom magnified many times. An atom is the smallest piece of matter that cannot be commonly broken down. Atoms of the same element are alike. For example, this chain contains gold atoms. Nearly 2,000 years after the ancient Greeks made their initial theories of the atom, an English chemist by the name of John Dalton conducted an experiment in the early 1800s leading to the widespread acceptance of the idea of the existence of atoms. Conducting experiments with gases, he decided that elements have particles that combine in simple ways. He pictured particles as simple spheres. Dalton's theories had the following parts. First, all matter is made of atoms that can be combined. Second, atoms of the same element are exactly alike. Third, atoms of different elements are different. And fourth, atoms of two or more elements can be combined to form new substances. Dalton made tremendous contributions to the understanding of the atom, but his discoveries were not complete. Toward the end of the 19th century, J.J. Thompson, an English scientist, found that atoms were not simple, solid spheres. He discovered a very important component of the atom that we put to use every day in the form of electricity and in magnets. He discovered electrons. Electrons are small particles located outside the nucleus that have a negative charge and cause the magnetic needle in the compass to point north. In 1911, Ernest Rutherford added more to our understanding of the atom. He fired a stream of positively charged particles at a thin sheet of gold foil. He found that most particles passed right through gold atoms in the sheet of foil. He concluded that the atoms were mostly made of space. Some particles, however, were deflected by the gold foil. He concluded that the atom had a small, dense, positively charged center that repelled the positively charged bullets. He called the center of the atom the nucleus. The nucleus is very tiny compared to the atom as a whole, equivalent in ratio to a marble in a stadium. Rutherford stated that all of an atom's positively charged particles 
were in the nucleus, and negatively charged particles were scattered outside the nucleus around the perimeter of the atom. A couple of years after Rutherford's contributions to the understanding of the atom, Niels Bohr proposed that electrons orbit around the nucleus. He stated that each electron has a fixed amount of energy and that the electrons orbit within energy levels, forming rings around the nucleus, similar to the layers of skin around an onion. The energy levels in Bohr's model can be compared to a ladder with rungs. As you climb the rungs of the ladder away from the nucleus, the amount of energy increases. By absorbing or releasing energy, an electron can move between energy levels, similar to climbing up or down a ladder. While today scientists agree that electrons orbit the nucleus in energy levels, they do not do so in regular paths. Instead, electrons dart in ever-changing paths within energy levels. They form what is referred to as an electron cloud. The electron cloud represents the region where electrons